Let's do some calculus. Let's do some calculus for form fields. Assuming, of course, that all of these fields are smooth. Wait, what does that mean? Oh, that means it's differentiable. Wait, what does that mean? Aha, let's go back to the exterior derivative that we learned in 3D, and let's scale it up to arbitrary dimensions. Now, if we have a zero form field, f, We've already done this. Its derivative is the gradient one form, df, given by the sum, i goes from one to n, partial f, partial xi, dxi. That is simple. That we've got. Now let's keep going. Let's induct and consider going from one forms to two forms. This also won't be so bad. If f is a scalar field and I look at the one form, f dx j, then its derivative is given by df wedge dx j. This holds for any j from one to n, and that is going to be the basis, so to speak, for how we define the exterior derivative in general, inductively. The derivative of a k-form field is going to be a k plus one form field. So if I take any basis k-form, something like dx i1, wedge dx i2, all the way up through dx i k, for simplicity, look, let's just call that dx with an underline. Then, for f a scalar field, and dx, this basis k-form, the derivative of f dx is given by df wedge dx. That one rule is going to allow us to do computations in general. So let's see how that works in the following example. Let's say that we have the three form given by quantity x1, x3 minus three x2, x5 times dx2 wedge dx3 wedge dx4. Now, what do we need to do? What we need to do is take the derivative of x1, x3 minus three x2, x5, and then wedge that with the three form dx2 wedge dx3 wedge dx4. Now, we're just going to apply the standard gradient one form rule that we know to that scalar field out in front, and what do we get? Well, from the product rule, we get x1 dx3 plus x3 dx1 minus three x2 dx5 minus three x5 dx2, wedge that with dx2, wedge dx3, wedge dx4. And now, aha, we see some repeats. DX2 gets repeated, boom, that term's gone. DX3 gets repeated, that term is also gone. That means we look at what's left over and we rewrite the final answer as X3 DX1, wedge DX2, wedge DX3, wedge DX4, minus three X2, DX5, wedge DX2, wedge DX3, wedge DX4. That's it, that's not so bad. All right, so consider the following weirder looking example. Let's say you have the two form field, dx1 wedge dx2 plus dx3 wedge dx4 plus dx5 wedge dx6. And consider the derivative of that two form squared. That means wedge that two form with itself, then take the derivative. Now that looks pretty bad, but if you take the wedge product of that two form with itself, get rid of the repeats, you are at first left with six terms, six basis two forms. Now, this is gonna require a little bit of manipulation and algebra on your part, but if you're careful with rearranging the terms, then what you will get is two dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx3 wedge dx4, plus two dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx5 wedge dx6, plus two dx3 wedge dx4 wedge dx5 wedge dx6. And now you have to take the derivative of that guy. But look, that's not so bad. Why? Because the scalar field out in front of these basis four forms is just two. It's constant, it does not change. And so its derivative vanishes. And that points to maybe a deeper truth or two. The most important one being that, look, the derivative really depends 
on that scalar field out in front, on how that K form changes as you move from point to point. So if we think about what the derivative of a K-form field really means, then at a point A, a basis K-form field dx takes oriented projected k-dimensional volume, f dx rescales that by f of A. Now if you take the derivative of f dx, you get df wedge dx. It's a k plus one form field. That means it takes in not just the k vectors for the dx part, but also a k plus first vector against which you evaluate df. You measure how this whole thing changes as you move in that last direction. But the cool part is, in the end, all the different vectors that you feed into this derivative k plus one form field are really equivalent. You can swap them. The order only matters up to a plus or a minus. And what makes that property the case, what makes the differentiation operator so special, is the determinant. Understanding determinants is really the key to understanding so many things, including the exterior derivative.